What you doing? I'm running out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you... Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? <laughs> Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our show today. I'm very pleased to report after somewhat of a hiatus, we're actually be able to get to the singer of Juliet Dreams, which is one of my favorite new country artists that are out there. So without further ado, let's get Erica on the line. Good afternoon, Erica. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I am so excited to have you on my show today. <laughs> Likewise. It's, it's been oh my a little bit of a it, haul, but we're finally here. <laughs> it has, and I apologize. It's just been absolute madness trying to get you onto the show, and fortunately, I could not. I am just pleased as bunch. I, I have to say that everything that I know about you, I'm sure the audience members are excited to hear about, and there's just a lot of ground to cover. So I wanted to just kind of get right to it and see what um, see what you can tell me about yourself. Well, thank you um, so much for having me on this show. Oh, definitely, any time. Um, I wanted to kind of start out the interview um, with maybe a, just a generalized discussion of your roots. Uh, I know you're originally born in Texas, and at an early age you had obviously relocated to New Mexico. Now, I'm assuming that the latter is where you gain most of your cultural beliefs and your rituals. Can you maybe just kind of expand on your life, you know, being young, living there, and, and tell us about your life a little bit? Absolutely. Well, like like you said, I am originally from El Paso, Texas. I was born there. I moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico at the age of two, so pretty much all of my values, everything has come from New Mexico. Um, everything about me really has been instilled by my mother and my father, uh, all my morals, all my beliefs, my everything. And basically, I, I love to sing, and, and i got to tell you a funny story. When I was really, really young, um, I used to make my family sit around and watch me sing and perform and do gymnastics around them. So I always knew that this is what I wanted to do without really knowing it <laughs> because when you're that young, you don't really know. You just say, oh, I want to be a singer. Oh, I want to be a dancer, things like that. Um, so that's pretty much where it started out. And I just basically just kept with it as far as, you know, doing like dancing, stuff like that. And um, about my background, my parents obviously are a huge part of my life. They have always encouraged me to do everything that I need to do for myself, whatever makes me happy. And to be honest, singing is what makes me happy. Um, I didn't really start until a little bit later on in life as far as professionally pursuing it. And um, that pretty much happened in my, my early 20s. So... I don't know if you want me to go into that or <laughs> we're going to get there little by little actually. I was okay. curious because obviously when you come from New Mexico, Me mm -hmm. excuse me, New Mexico and your heritage right. obviously um is a little bit different than ours. Curiosity dictates a couple of different things. What your lifestyle was like as you were as a young child and then moreover with being a musician, I know with some of my friends, a lot of which mm -hmm. are musicians, they don't always get that that fire in that belly, that passion doesn't just all of a sudden come to them one morning. You know what I mean? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it's, oh, I want to be a doctor, and then years later it becomes a musician, that sort of thing. Sure. You know, I, I, I don't have any musical influences in my family, so this all kind of just stemmed from myself, of course, with the okay. support of my parents and so forth. New Mexico is it, it, it's very much... Now it's a little bit different. I'm from Albuquerque, so if you will, it's it's a bigger city. Um, it's a lot smaller, obviously, than Los Angeles is where I'm at now. <laughs> but right. things are a little bit different there. The culture is very simple. Um, the people from New Mexico are very simple people, very humble, and yet just so generous and full of support. And that's where I think musically um, – I couldn't have asked for anything more. As far as growing up, um, I have one brother, and we basically did things that, that every child does. I mean, back then we didn't have all the video games and things that we have now. So we used to ride our bikes. We used to go do stuff um, outside. It, it was a little bit different. 
um, the Albuquerque wasn't as grown as it is now. So obviously the upbringing isn't like a major city as such as like New York or Los Angeles, things like that. Oh, definitely. And, of course, for those of us, like I said, who's who's never gone or experienced that sort of thing, it's just an interesting and a neat culture, I, I find. Mm-hmm. I'm always curious and intrigued to find out how somebody started where they started. And as you said, with your passion for music, um, even younger, were you kind of tampering around, maybe playing instruments, singing around the house? How did, how did that first start for you? I've always sang around the house. Um, I can just remember singing for my parents over and over and anybody who would listen to me. My friend, I I had a girlfriend who actually lived um, in the house behind me, and we used to go around and knock on the neighbor's doors, and (laughs) we would ask them if we could sing for them or we could perform for them somehow because back then things were just a whole lot more simpler. Um, Coming from Albuquerque, it was a lot of housing. We We didn't live anywhere where we perceived it to be dangerous. So we, it was at a time where you could go knock on people's doors and, and ask for things. And, and so I remember going around the neighborhood saying, can, can we sing for you? Can we perform for you? And then we'd enter little talent shows here and there. Just a lot of it was, was just um, something that I wouldn't normally do as, as an adult, obviously. Sure. But when you're, when you're a child, you... You don't think of things like that. You just want to explore the world and and do everything that comes to you. We have no fears back then. Definitely, definitely, I agree. So never was there a point in time where mom and dad are standing there and they're looking at you and they're thinking, you know, honey, we'd really like you to someday get a really responsible job. I know I've heard that in my realm as far as reliable, good future, doctor, lawyer, that sorts of things. They never kind of pursued you in a more stable direction, if you will. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, okay. I'm the one who's been pursuing the music aspect of it. I, of course, went to high school and graduated from high school, and I began to go to college, and I stopped. And the reason why I stopped, I began to work for an accounting firm. And at that time, being as I was 18 years old, at the time I was making very good income, um, you know, for my age. And... I just stopped going to college, and I remember my mother and father just saying, hey, you know, you, you really need to pursue your your career. You need to pursue your education. It's the most important thing. And at that point, I was kind of starting to pick up little venues here and there, little, um, like, local fiestas or singing with the local bands, things like that. Nothing on a professional level whatsoever. And... What I realized was, you know, you really do need that education to advance yourself. So at a later date, I basically stopped. I put everything on hold, and I pursued my education. So while doing that, I had a full-time job as well. That made it completely difficult, but because I needed it, and my my parents did push me to do that. And right now, in hindsight, and looking back, at this age, thinking, I am so glad they did that. I really am. I bet. How wonderful. That's so wonderful to have the, the family support, I think, is really integral as it relates to any kind of career. Just It kind of flourishes everything, I guess that's my opinion. I was Absolutely. curious. Uh, now, I know many musicians, especially most of them that have come on my show, have cited that they have early inspirations relative to music. Um, I'm just curious to ask you if you could name for some of us uh, your musical role models, either past or present. Well, my musical role models are kind of all over the place. Um, My family is, growing up, I just remember my mom playing a lot of Spanish music and any type of Spanish music. She would play slow type, a lot of Luis Miguel she would play a lot of mariachi music, my dad as well. So those influences obviously stayed with me. My passion for mariachi music and for Spanish music in general comes from my family. And that's what I started singing to begin with. I, I began performing Spanish music. Well, I love all the hip-hop and I love country and I love pop music. I love all types of music. I, I enjoy listening to classical music as well. But growing up, I would say being younger, I was influenced a lot by a lot of country music. And I think when you come from New Mexico, obviously there's all types of music. But 
we were pretty much, or were, how I grew up, I was surrounded by a lot of country artists, and that's where my influences came from. I would say my strongest influence as a singer would have to be Luis Miguel, and that's because I just grew up listening to him. And when I started to listen to a lot of country western music, Patsy Cline was obviously just a huge aspiration for me, and it really just kind of grabbed my heart to say, you know, I really want to do that. I would love to do country music. So I was kind of at a, a torn place because I loved both, and I felt like, you know, I think when I start pursuing music professionally, I think I'm going to start in a mariachi level just because I grew up with it. My family, I was inspired by it, and that was just one of my role models that I thought, I'm going to go with that first. Okay, gotcha. Got it. Patsy Cline, who does not love Patsy Cline? Huge. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, she just, she was so amazing and so iconic for her. You know, just amazing to me. I think mm-hmm. she's wonderful. Definitely. Now, just to give some of the, I'll give some background information to the audience for those individuals who don't know you, obviously. And I would say through a time span of approximately five years, I understand, um, first off, your lead vocals to a band called, forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, Los du- Duques? Yes. D-U-Q-U-E-S. Right. <laughs> um, Los Duques. <laughs> Thank you. And I know that you had done um, various, performed with various local bands, obviously, prior to your decision to, as you mentioned, pursue your education. Um, I'm kind of curious because I don't know that you necessarily answered that in terms of what kind of prompted that said life choice, meaning to pursue your education at that point. And then have you ever regretted the decision to purge forth with music as compared to maybe completing your education? No. I actually, because at this point, I've been able to do both. So while I successfully completed my degree, I, after pursuing my degree and and actually obtaining it, then I decided at that point, just because I had, I've always had a love for music, and I had that gut instinct thinking, what am I doing? I really need to pursue music. This is what I feel that I'm meant to do, even though I have my education and I enjoy I enjoyed the work and I enjoyed doing accounting and so forth and I transitioned at a later date into something else, I still had that gut feeling. Do you know what I'm talking about? That inner feeling that's telling you, you know, you really need to do this. This is something that this is you, Erica. So I think I made the decision, you know, I really need to start pursuing music again and I miss performing and I want to do this professionally and I want to do this somehow in a bigger realm than I was doing before, and it was quite ironic because it almost seemed simultaneously when I started to make these decisions to do that, I ran into an old friend who happened to be a mariachi, and he asked me, where where have you been? What happened? You kind of dropped out of the music scene, and after talking for a while with him, he he said, you know, my cousins have a recording studio. I think you should come in and maybe just take a look around and see if it's something you might want to do. We can practice and you can start playing again. And when I went to the recording studio at that point, I decided, you know, I want to make my own album. I want to accomplish something for myself. And that's where it all started. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay. Now, um, further, to just elaborate just to hear a bit here, mm-hmm. as part of your musical resume, because, again, I'm not sure that everybody knows just all the magnificent things you've done. And I have mm-hmm. to say, I just have to stop a second to say, in case anyone has not looked at Erica, she's breathtakingly gorgeous. You need Thanks. to do a Google search and you need to look at you because you are just magnificent. Not only can you sing, but you're gorgeous. Thank you so much. I just much. had to say that. Oh, I really you're quite welcome. Appreciate that. No, no I'm not a problem. I don't mean to embarrass you. <laughs> hey, you know what? If girls aren't going to tell you that, you know what I'm saying? It's exactly how that works. Um, I noticed, which I found kind of neat, was um, one of the things that you've done, obviously, is what they have at those Hispanic Heritage Days. I know you've done one in yes. West Virginia. I know you were part of the Unity Festival in the past. Um, can you maybe kind of, pray tell, can you tell us how these opportunities were presented to you and maybe share with us what was that experience like, meaning in playing in a festival as compared to maybe doing something more local? Well, the I would have to say the local venues are fantastic. I mean, they really have a huge audience. Everybody is very involved with it. So 
while it's wonderful, I would have to say the Hispanic Heritage, those type of events are a completely different feel. Those are more, um, how would you say them? They're not as... Okay, now here's how I'll break it down. When you have a local festival and so forth, everybody's there to have fun, and basically it's it's like a free-for-all. You can, They have carnivals, events, do whatever you like. Everybody's there for a purpose just to go have fun and be entertained. Mm-hmm. When you have something like a Hispanic Heritage Day, it's a little bit more of a professional setting. So it kind of changes the mood a little bit. So you have to work extra hard <laughs> to get... Those those attendees, while they enjoy themselves and so forth, and they're there to have a great time, it's a completely different vibe with the two. They, I would say it's more of a professional setting when you do the Hispanic Heritage versus local festivals and things like that. And did you find that to be remotely intimidating for yourself, or, or was it more of the rise to the challenge and, and you appreciate something like that more? I will say on my first event that I did for Hispanic Heritage Day, I was great. I was very intimidated just by the setting, by everything. I had to sing the national anthem, a cappella. It was a very intimidating setting. However, the minute I got on that stage, it's kind of like a whole other Erica comes out. <laughs> so hmm. basically, I I just open up and and I did it, and I felt so comfortable, I felt so at home, and I embraced every single moment of it. So whether I'm at a professional venue, whether I'm at another venue or a local club or a casino or a bar or I'm performing in front of five people, the same inner gut feeling, the same happiness, the same projection comes out of me. Gotcha. Okay. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, I know in 2008 was the creation mm-hmm. of your first album. Um, again, forgive me, it's entitled Tu Nuevo Amor. Okay, yeah. I got that right. Okay. <laughs> now, to your credit, of course, this piece of work was nominated for a total of 13 awards and one song of the year, song of the year, I don't know why I can't talk today, at the <laughs> NMHEA Music Awards. Right. Now, did you find that to be one of the more surreal moments in your career? Uh, I mean, was it just kind of maybe out of left field and you're thinking, wow, look at this? You know, it really was. I, I like I said, when I decided to make the album, it was just something that I wanted to do to suffice myself. I wanted to make an album that not only I enjoyed, but something that the people would actually enjoy. I wanted to make something that represented me. I wanted to sing, vocally project. I wanted the music in it to be something that would say, this is Erica. And the music on it is basically, it's a lot of romantic music. It's a lot of love. It's a lot of of desperation, it's it's going through hard times, it's happy times, it's it's kind of the cycle of life, but it has a very unique romantic feel. So when I actually recorded the album, I had no idea that it was going to be nominated. Actually, I wasn't even thinking that. <laughs> so as you can imagine, to my surprise, when it was nominated, and when I did win the award for Mariachi Song of the Year, that was just something to me that was unexplainable. That was something that I achieved, and my innerness, just my gratification, I just don't have words to express how I felt about it. (laughs) But it was something that I accomplished, and I'm very proud of, and I'm very happy, and I owe a lot of that to my parents because they were so supportive of all of it. Okay. Gotcha. And then... (laughs) as if that wasn't wonderful enough, people. You were also <laughs> nominated, I know, a second time with your duet with um, Tobias Renee. Um, yeah. I was curious to ask you about um, if you could explain to us the formulation of your working relationship with him, and I also know that you've collaborated before with, or have worked with, I should say, uh, the famous comedian, which is Paul Rodriguez. How were those relationships solidified? You know, um, Tobias Renee, he's, he's actually a friend of mine now at this point. I actually met him through singing. I met him back in 2008. And because being from New Mexico, both of us were performers there. And he, quite honestly, is very well known. And so I would do some festivals. And then I was introduced through a mutual friend to him. And he heard some of my music and he asked me, 
to do some songs with him. Um, and then eventually he asked me to tour with him, which I was very excited to do. While I was doing my own kind of touring, if you will, I was doing my own shows, I, I toured with him as well. So I was kind of doing two things at one time. Um, I was doing mariachi music on one hand, and when I started to tour with Tobias, if you've listened to the song Cucuru Cucu Paloma, it's it's a little bit different. It has a mariachi feel, but it's a little bit more soulful in the Spanish sense. And when I started to tour with him, I started incorporating a lot of different styles of Spanish music. And then I eventually put a couple of country songs just to try it out, <laughs> if you will, and, and started incorporating that into my shows as well. So I did tour with Tobias. And it, it was a very successful tour. We had some other local artists come with us as well, and, and it was successful. When we were nominated for that song, I mean, it, it's just really a remarkable song, and, and I have to say he did a wonderful job in producing it and actually in his vocals as well. Ah, wonderful. And then how did you get to your association with Paul Rodriguez? Was that uh, through the course that of was the event? That was by chance. <laughs> oh, I, that was by chance. We, um, I went to the Tejano Music Awards, and because I was involved, or I actually know a lot of Tejano artists and so forth, and have worked with them and, and so forth. And they invited me to go to the Tejano Music Awards in San Antonio. And when I was actually a presenter, they introduced me to Mr. Rodriguez, and we opened the show together. So it was quite an experience, and it was something that I will never forget. And, and I'm quite humbled to be to have worked with him. Gotcha. All right. Now, I'm curious, at what point did you actually opt to, to formulate a band of your own? I, I mean, was it your mindset at that time in your life to kind of move those to this towards the direction of producing country music? Like, for instance, you decided to start this band. W was country your focal point at that point, or tell us the progression of how all this occurred. Sure, absolutely. Well, I had my own mariachi that I performed with when I was still in New Mexico, and that, that was a different style of music. Like I said, when I started to tour and doing shows, I did a show in Saginaw, Michigan, and that was a Latin festival. And the attendance was incredible, and I thought, you know, I really would love to incorporate some country music into this and see how the fans respond. And I did it, and it was such a positive response. And I think the reason for not only the response, but, but for me, it was gratifying because country music has always been something that, that I've loved, and I wanted to start transitioning over to another style of music. So... That came through in my performance, because when I sing country, I mean, I really sing it. So, um, <laughs> and, and the song choices that I select are usually, I mean, they're, they're songs that are very heartfelt and so forth. Um, I began to write music at that point, too, and that's when I started to, to think to myself, I really need to make this transition into country music. And... Um, it wasn't until I decided to relocate to Los Angeles is when I just, when I actually took country music to full force and stopped doing Spanish music. I got you. Um, interestingly enough, I'm sure most people don't know this, I know you've collaborated with BMI producer um, Toby Sandoval. Yes. I wanted to ask, A, have you ever collaborated with him in the past before, and just what sort of knowledge did you kind of take away from that experience as far as utilizing his talents? Well, can I first have to say, Toby Sandoval is an incredible, just impeccable producer. I, again, something I can't explain. He is a musical genius. I am so fortunate and just to have worked with him. When I moved here, when I moved to Los Angeles, I began to record and, and kind of I, I spoke to a few engineers and a few, in, a few producers kind of talking about my project and what I was aiming towards. Everything was original music, so it was kind of starting from scratch, if you will. When I was introduced to Mr. Sandoval, I was completely impressed. I had heard some of his, his music that he's done before, a lot of his productions, and I obviously wanted to work with him. 
but it, that wasn't up to me. <laughs> so I submitted my music to him, and he agreed to, to work with me. And it has been a bonding, everlasting friendship with him. And, and he is just incredible and musically talented. I'm, I'm really fortunate. He, he pretty much brought my ideas and everything that I had to the table. He brought it up ten notches. So I really owe him oh. for, for these wonderful productions that he produced. Oh, that's amazing. My goodness. Now, do you anticipate working with him continuously in the future uh, with ongoing or oncoming projects? I do. We have discussed um, more collaborations in the future. We, we've been working on some other things. And um, I actually have something in the works now. And, and again, I just I couldn't be happier because he is just an incredible producer. I'm very excited to work with him. Awesome. Um, off the top of your head, would you say mm -hmm. if there was one dream producer or, or, or in your mind maybe one other musician that you would just love to work with, who would it be? Wow, that's a tough call. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> because there are so many artists that I would love to collaborate with. I mean, country, any type of music really, but, but I do have a lot of country artists that, that I would just, I would love to work with. Jason Aldean happens to be a top country artist in my book, Miranda Lambert as well. I, I really enjoy her music, and I really can relate to what she does, Faith Hill as well. So, I mean, the, the list can go on and on, but those are just just a very few number of people that I, I would love to collaborate with. Wonderful. Okay. Um I wanted to talk a little bit about, obviously, your first two singles, both New Tattoo as well as Shot Time. Mm -hmm. um, from what I can tell here, they're becoming quite successful. I'd like to know uh, if you could share with us the inspiration and or if there's any significant meaning to both or either of these songs. <laughs> okay, well, here goes the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we would appreciate that because there's always a backstory to this, I'm sure. Well, okay, so <laughs> I knew this would come yeah. at some point. Shot yeah. Time is actually a song written of actual events that happened. And they're kind of little, if you will, innuendos of things that have happened with my very, very close friends. So when they hear the song, um, they know exactly what we're talking about when, when when we're discussing the song at first, and then once I put it actually into a production, then that became something else. So as you can imagine, all the girls, when we get together, we just, we have such a ball because every single line in that song is actually an event or something that has been said by one of us. So wow. that's where Shot Time was influenced from. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was quite a song, and to be honest, it was a fun song to write. Um, I wrote the song, and I had a little bit of help from Deanne Gonzalez, who who I asked to collaborate on some songs, which she was on New Tattoos. And um, like I said, Shot Time was just one of those songs where it was completely feel good. It came naturally. It, it was a song that I wrote literally in about ten minutes. So it it was just quite. It's quite interesting, I'll put it that way. <laughs> okay, I've got you. And then um, New Tattoo? New Tattoos was actually written by Deanne Gonzalez, myself as well, and basically that was a little bit more influence on her part. Um, she, It was kind of like a feel-good attitude song. It was a little bit more... You know, we get caught in our day-to-day -day lives, our busy lives, going to work, coming home, doing the things that we need to do. And that song is just a little bit more like get out there and be free. Let's, you know, let's do whatever we need to do and chase your dreams. Although it's kind of put in a different way, it's more of like a be free type of spiritual song. I've got you. Now, I've always asked this uh same question out of most of these singers and musicians that come on my show. Everybody, mm -hmm. and I'm an author, so of course I'm very, I'm a literary artist as compared to your musical artist. Describe for us your process. Um, yeah, obviously everybody gets inspiration from somewhere, so where do we get these creations that you come up with? Are you just sitting in your house someplace with a notebook? Is there a set process for you? You know, there's not a set process for me. I've written songs where I could just be sitting down and a thought will occur to me. I've written songs where I am wake up in the middle of the night and a verse is 
just playing in my head and I have to write it down. Um, I, I, I don't really have a set regimen, if you will, for how I write my music, but everything comes from somewhere. Every single song that I write, there's either a meaning, a particular meaning in my life or somebody who's close to me. I've written some, some songs that hopefully you'll hear in the future that I'm working on now, and um, they're, they're, they're quite sad, if you will, but there are actual events that, that have happened to either myself or, like I said, somebody close to me. So every single song that I have that I'm writing and so forth, those are actually inspired by true events. Okay. Gotcha. All right. It's interesting, too, because other musicians, you know, some of them use alcohol, and, you know, you go and you have mm-hmm. a couple glasses of wine, and they're like, oh, mm-hmm. we're duly inspired, or they go travel someplace. So I always find it interesting to ask someone, where do all these creations come from? It's really mm-hmm. neat to see that. Now, I'm quite curious to ask, um, as your musician, how do you view the uh, direction of country music, meaning the crossover country pop artists that seem to keep continuously emerging? It might be my imagination, but there seems to be this this – cross-country pop thing going on. It's true. It's it's very true. I mean, Taylor Swift is a prime example of one. Mm-hmm. I have the utmost respect for her. She um, she really has brought country music to a whole another regimen. Same with Sugar Land. I mean, same thing. They not only pertain to, to the country audience, I mean, all types of people just gravitate towards them, whether they're influenced by hip-hop or or classical or anything like that. It seems to me like those audiences gravitate towards them, so I have the utmost respect for them. Wonderful. Now, additionally, I wanted to ask, now, are you personally an advocate, like, for instance, we have the American Idols or the voice shows, those sites... Those are all platforms as it relates to the up-and-coming musicians. Mm -hmm. There's some that say, wonderful tool. Then there are others that are like, well, remember when Reba McIntyre and George Strait were out there? There was no American Idol. There was none of this stuff. I mean, do you think it's just a quick, easy means, per se, for an up-and-coming musician? Or what's your take on that? You know, I think times are are different. I mean, everything has changed. And I I basically say if you – want to go on The Voice or American Idol. I mean, Carrie Underwood, if if you look at her, Kelly Clarkson, they started from American Idol, and they are one of the top vocalists in the world. So I say go for it. I say no matter how you want to pursue your dream, whether it's playing locally, whether it's going on to a television show, whether, whether no matter what it is, that you want to do, if it's something that you feel inspired by and it's something that you want to do, I say go for it. Okay. And that tends to be the actual consensus for a lot of the musicians I've been acting, which is surprising just because, like I said, I remember back when there was Reba McIntyre, Tanya Tucker, Mm -hmm. it was kind of like you worked and you worked and you worked and you went every single place and you auditioned and you did all of this stuff and it just seems like it's a little easier. Simon Cowell has kind of made life a little easier, apparently. <laughs> true, true. That's, that's you know, absolutely it's, it's, true. Well, and, I, and I kind of feel like a lot of opportunities have, have been presented. I mean, some of these individuals would never have a chance if if they hadn't done it that way. So, I mean, again, I I say go for it. And whether it's, you, you know, you're working hard in that realm of things or you're working hard in another way where you're trying to put your music out there and you're trying to tour and you're trying to go all over the place, like, as you said, like Reba McIntyre, I know she did a lot of ra- rodeos, such as Faith Hill did the same thing. Um, I say all of everybody, no matter how you pursue your dream, how whatever you want to do, I think that that is the best way for you. And and I think it is really, you're right, Simon Cowell has really opened a lot of doors for so many people, but it has really been so beneficial to all of us as listeners because even though I'm a musician, I'm obviously a listener as well, and I'm part of the audience. Certainly, definitely. And I would say certainly I would agree with you as well in terms of some of the uh, candidates that have eventually come, even if they haven't won, from this particular show, have really kind of platformed them and and given them some great opportunities. So definitely I would agree there. Okay, I have a question for the singer herself, actually. This is, uh, I'm assuming that you write your own music. I do. uh, Most of the time. Yes, you do. Um, And I'm going to put this live on air so that this way everybody hears me offering this uh, opportunity to Erica. You are a singer. 
and I am a now documentary maker as well, and I would be quite honored if you would consider the possibility of uh, creating a song for me, for my oh, documentary. Absolutely. <laughs> I've been, of all these musicians that I've had on, and everyone that I have talked to, and everyone that I've heard thus far, yourself and one other lady, um, who I can't mention yet, uh, are the two that, that strike a chord who I think are capable of, of producing a quality um a quality piece of music. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that you will consider the opportunity, which will hopefully evolve you even into more things because it's a uh, documentary about bipolar disorder, which is, as everyone knows who listens to my show, is my pet cause, and I've been bipolar for 25 years. So this is a huge pet project for me, and I keep it very close to my heart. So I would love if you'd consider the possibility of actually doing a little work for little old me. <laughs> You know, I would, I would be that. honored. I really would. And I I think bipolarism, I mean, it, it really does need to be brought to light to a lot of people. So I would be honored to do that. Oh, well, thank you so much. We shall have to discuss that. Or you Absolutely. and I, Michelle, will have to discuss that. And kudos. I have to throw that out to Michelle McGee. Thank you so much, Bullseye Entertainment, for orchestrating this interview, obviously, because she's been very instrumental in helping us with this. I wanted yes. to um, throw out there, uh, as far as your future events or public opportunities, um, you know, you have yourself a following, obviously, but here we are at present day. If someone wants to see Erica in the next couple of weeks, someone living out of state, someone listening to you right now, where are they going to have an opportunity to do so? Are they going to? Well, that's going to be coming in the near future. I will have. I do have a website. So I will start okay. posting any type of events that I'm going to begin to do. I basically stopped performing for a little bit just so I could write my music, get it produced, and I, I obviously just released it. So that's coming in the works pretty soon, but I will keep everybody posted on via my, my website, my Twitter, and my Facebook. Okay, certainly. And then um, in terms of I was wondering if you might consider going back to your, and when I call it musical roots, for me, naturally, I would be thinking mariachi, things along those lines. Did it ever occur to you to go backwards maybe a little bit and be like, okay, well, the next piece of work I'm going to do or the next few are going to be more relative to that as compared to country? Um, at this point, I'm, I'm going to stick with country at this point. Okay. Um, I, I really do want to give it my, my full and, and everything just to transition over. I mean, obviously, all types of Spanish music and my heritage is very close to my heart. And I love singing it. I love performing it. I love listening to it. So I always have that in my roots, and I will always incorporate that. But as far as my progression and where I'm aiming towards now, I really am just sticking with country. Okay. And, and that'll be kind of your base there. Also, yeah. um, the, the two singles, are they a precursor to perhaps an eventual full-length CD release? Where, where is that headed? They are. They are. Okay. And I will keep everybody posted, and I will update everything. Okay. <laughs> but so nothing definite in, right now. There's nothing she can tell us right now except yeah. <laughs> that it's all in progress, all in the works, obviously. Right. Um, which is a good thing, definitely. Now, I want to just throw all this out here because, of course, we don't want to miss anything. I'm going to reel off every possible way that I have found to reach you, and if I'm wrong, you can let me know. Um Erica, of course, is on Facebook underneath Juliet Dreams, which is J-U-L-I-E-T. Um, website, of course, same name, www.julietdreams.com. She can also be found on Twitter at Juliet Dreams, which is all one word together. Um, YouTube, it's under Juliet Dreams Music. Her actual music can be listened to via iTunes, of course. And I'm not sure if the www.ericabonilla.com, is that more of a current site or old site, or can people still utilize that for new information? Actually, the ericabonilla.com just links you right to Juliet Dreams. Okay, gotcha. I just wanted to make sure we weren't missing any and all opportunities as far as getting a hold of you or getting new information about you, that sort of stuff. Um, any anticipated date for a new release for anything? I, I will say 2013, but I don't have a date for you. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> so it's all a work in progress, obviously. It is. Wonderful. So I only have two things for you. Um, mm -hmm. I would really appreciate it, Erica, if you would stay in contact with me so that we can orchestrate something for my documentary. I would be forever in your debt if you would do so. And second of all, I want to give you an open invitation to come back to my show once you either have your new product in line, if you want to come back and chit-chat, if you want to come back and maybe offer some advice to aspiring musicians. Uh, I find your talent to be amazing. I think you're just absolutely lovely, and you're just very impressive to me. 
Thank you so much. I, again, I would I would love to to work with you on your project. I would love to be on the show again, and I I couldn't thank you enough for having me on here and for oh, inviting me not. back. <laughs> not a problem whatsoever. I, I wanted to make a point to let you know, as and you can certainly pass this along to your fans as well, and I will pass this along to my listeners as well. After we get finished here shortly, this live episode will become an archived episode later today. So at any given point in time, anyone can come back to Blog Talk Radio on my page, listen to our entire interview and its duration. In addition, I have a partner who, um, somewhere down the road, hopefully soon this week, will go ahead and be putting it onto YouTube. So you'll get national exposure as it's relative to... Um, your interview. That's um, wonderful. Thank you so yeah, much. Definitely. So this way, then you get yourself plenty of exposure, certainly. And I, I want to mention this to you, Erica, because I think you're the only person that hasn't heard this yet. I'm sure Michelle knows this. But if you, if you know any of your friends, if you're familiar with anybody in the industry whatsoever, I'm mm-hmm. the chairperson of a very large breast cancer fundraising event at the beginning of December. So if any of you would like to contribute, if you know anyone, please pass the word along. Get a hold of me. Please let me know. I can't. I cannot tell you how in need I am of help on this thing. So I just keep passing word along to everybody. But everyone in the show knows that already. So I'm just kind of passing it along to you. Well, Case absolutely. You know I will put the word out. I will absolutely put sure. it out. And and anybody who can help with that, myself included, that wonderful cause. I mean, great, great cause. And and absolutely, I'm more than happy. I appreciate that very much, my dear. All right, I will let you get back to your uh, songwriting, hopefully songwriting for me soon in the near future. And again, open invitation, come back anytime and visit us. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch right. soon. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thanks, Erica. You have a good Thank day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, folks, I have to say again just how absolutely lovely Erica is, and Erica being, of course, of Juliet Dreams. I want to reiterate again, they are on Facebook, Juliet Dreams, Twitter, at Juliet Dreams. Their music can be listened to on YouTube underneath Juliet Dreams Music as well as iTunes, website being www.julietdreams.com. So just two quick things I wanted to touch on before I leave you today, Uh, first of which is tomorrow, if you want to tune in at 5 o'clock Central Standard Time, we will finally be able to get an opportunity to interview Michelle Hutchins, who is otherwise known as AKA the Mile High Medium. She is an amazing, eclectic medium, psychic extraordinaire. Cannot wait to get her on the show, ask her some questions, kind of pick her a little bit pick her brain a little bit in terms of knowledge, I should say, about the uh, known and the unknown, if you will. Again, 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. Last little ditty here I wanted to cover in the last minute or two is just to talk real briefly. Obviously, we all know that today is November 6th, which means it's Election Day in our country. Uh, There's been a number of individuals who have either been on my Facebook page, on my regular personal page, or otherwise that have basically kind of ribbed me, basically. Um, Up until this point, I've been a staunch advocate of... um, not voting. I felt that my vote wasn't going to count, and I also felt that it wasn't necessary. I'm coming on here today just to let you know, irregardless of my opinions or whatever I choose between now and 8 o'clock this evening, I would encourage each and every person in each and every state that's listening to my broadcast today, you do matter. You obviously have a say in what goes on in this country. Um, I myself have my own personal beliefs. I'm very respectful as it relates to whatever candidate you vote for, whether it's Democrat, Republican, or otherwise. I think you should have a right in this country to speak your opinion and to cast your own vote. So I wholeheartedly advocate everyone getting out to the polls today between now and 8 o'clock, making your vote count, making your voice be heard by utilizing that right. So, once again, I want to say thank you to Erica. I want to say thank you once again to Michelle McGee of Bullseye Entertainment for orchestrating this interview. And, again, I'm hoping and crossing my fingers tomorrow, 5 o'clock, Central Standard Time, Mile High Media, Michelle Hutchins. And last little plug here, please, 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 please check out my Facebook page, SINS Charity Event for Wisconsin Breast Cancer Coalition. Please check it out. Um, Otherwise, I have a local direct website, which is Sins Charity Event, wbcc.yolasite.com. Please go check it out. All ticket information is located there. Any and all sort of information you're looking for relative to the event can be found there. I appreciate any and all assistance you can give me, whether it's time, donations, buying a ticket, offering, anything would be greatly appreciated. And I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. You all have a great day, and I will see you then. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. 
by singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you Bye, a wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? <laughs> Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you Bye, a wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? <laughs> Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.